Hey you guys, so today we are going to be starting a new month of Project Throwback. If you didn't catch the series from last month, basically all I'm trying to do is choose a few products that I'm going to be using over the course of a month. And I'm just doing this to basically try and get as much use as I can out of uh, my collection and what I kind of have. And I want you guys to follow along by uh, picking some products out of your collection to use up over the course of a month. It doesn't have to be exactly what I'm using, just kind of whatever you have kicking around. This is just purely for inspiration. I was asking some of you guys what you wanted to see for this month if there was a particular palette that you guys had in mind and I saw a lot of you guys uh, saying that you wanted to see sip culture and I saw a lot of you guys saying that you wanted to see prism so I have been wanting to do a video for a while where I do a palette mashup where basically I take two palettes that I think would work well together so I thought it would be cool to take both palettes and use these two palettes in conjunction with each other for the whole month I think we'll be able to get some really cool looks out of these two palettes together um, as you can kind of see just by looking at them they're actually quite similar in tones but I felt like both both palettes, um, when I was using them originally, I felt like both of them kind of could have been aided by a few extra little things. So I'm hoping using them together will result in some really great looks. I know that there was some feedback from the first round of this project. Um, some people kind of had issues with me using additional products to add to the look, like, you know, like glitters or pigments or whatever. And I know that some of you will be disappointed um, in me choosing to use two different palettes, but the thing is like, it's just meant to be fun. We're just trying to use up what we have. And these are two palettes that I have that I haven't gotten enough use out of. Again, you guys don't need to feel like you need to run out and buy these palettes to recreate these looks recreate the techniques, recreate the shapes, color combinations using palettes that you already own. It doesn't need to be exactly what I have. It's just about having fun, using your makeup, and that's it. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> I'm going to be putting in my music for this video. I've been having like a really crappy week, so makeup has been a little escape for me, so I'm just going to be getting in my little zone. I know a lot of you guys were asking what I was listening to last time and how I was able to like keep talking while I was listening to music. I listen to Sufjan Stevens a lot when I uh, am like just cleaning or doing makeup or whatever and I just want to like relax and chill out and it's like the calmest music ever so it's super easy to listen to while I'm working. But I also listen a lot to um, my travel playlist. I know a few of you guys have it. I think I posted on Twitter a couple of times, but I'll link my travel playlist down below. It's just like super chill music to like relax to and whatever. So I use that for everything as well. Okay, I'm gonna start with my base. I wanted to try this CoverGirl Vitalist Elixir Foundation because I got it for my drugstore video and I hadn't used it yet. So I'm gonna try that out. I am just gonna dilute it a little bit with my uh, Vichy Mineral 89 Serum. While I'm doing my foundation, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a mental health update. Um, a lot of you guys have kind of been like keeping up with me and just like asking me how I've been and what I've been kind of doing to cope and stuff like that. I know I've seen a lot of you guys DMing me on Instagram and tweeting at me and all that kind of stuff. Um, just a little update. I'm not sure if I've even mentioned it here on YouTube or not, but um, I know in my video back in January, I basically said that, that I'm like the poster child for having so many problems, but not like doing anything to help myself. So just a little update on that. I am going back to counseling right now. Um, I found a really, really, really good counselor that I like a lot. I don't feel like I've ever clicked with um, a therapist the way that I have with this lady. Like she's just been so great. And I feel like that's really been helping me a lot. I think the thing that's hard for me personally is when I'm kind of like at like a low point with my mental health, I find it really difficult to commit to doing anything to help myself because I'm at such a low point that it's really hard for me to like function. I don't like this foundation. <laughs> Just as a side note, I feel like this makes me look super dry. But yeah, so I felt like in January, I just wasn't quite ready to kind of commit to going to see someone or talk to someone um, because I just felt like I was at such a, like such an unbearably low point that like it was just hard for me to even like get up and like shower and um, do really like basic stuff. I'm gonna use my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Liquid Concealer in shade four. So yeah, I've been going to counseling now for just over a month. Um, and I feel like it's going really well. I'm trying to work really hard on maintaining some kind of like balance and not constantly aiming for perfection and not meeting my perfection goals. <laughs> Something I'm learning more and more is that I just have a really like defeatist attitude. I kind of set myself up for failure by basically like telling myself that I need to attain something and I need to attain it almost overnight. Like I'm really big on instant gratification, which is why I feel like I have a hard time sticking to like dietary goals and working out and stuff like that because it's sort of like if I don't see something happening immediately, then I'm like, this is a waste of my time and I have so many things I need to focus on because I need to be successful and I need to be this and I need to be that and I need to be whatever. So it's sort of like if I'm not 
coming to fruition with something right now, then I stop doing it. So anyways, that's just kind of where I'm at in terms of like mental health and stuff like that and trying to take better care of myself. I know that when I first started mentioning um, dealing with depression and stuff like that, a ton of you guys had kind of reached out to me and told me that you guys were going through similar stuff. Even if I didn't respond to you, I probably read your message. So if any of you guys are struggling um, or were struggling and you want to update me with how you're doing, definitely like send me a DM on Instagram or whatever and I'll try my best to get back to you guys I just would like to know how you guys are doing as well so anyways that's that I'm gonna go spray so much setting spray on my face and try to get this back to a dewy situation uh, I'm gonna put my eye primer on my brows and then we'll jump in and do our eyes together okay so I just want to give a little disclaimer before we jump into the eyes here I know that the subculture palette was um, very controversial for many reasons. Um, a lot of people had some kind of like issues with the formula um, and patchiness and some weird blending issues and stuff like that. So I'm gonna try my best throughout the course of this to kind of um, walk you through how I like correct things that may be going wrong with the formula, basically, try to show you how to deal with as much of that as I possibly can. And hopefully I'll make this palette a little bit more usable for you if you ended up picking it up. Very first thing that's gonna be really important with this um, is if you are using an eye primer to make sure to set your eye primer um, with basically a skin color powder. You could even use like a translucent powder or whatever because these colors in this formula um, really, really adheres to any kind of like wetness on the lid and it makes it a lot harder to blend out. It often changes colors. So just make sure that you're setting that where it feels completely matte and like dry to the touch. There's no tackiness whatsoever. That's gonna help you a lot with blending with this palette. And this is such a pigmented palette that you don't need that primer to be wet to really have the colors pop. So I'm gonna start with the shade Untamed. I'm grabbing a Smith 230 brush and I am taking a small 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 amount of that and I tap off all of the excess uh, again this is quite a powdery palette a lot of people had issues with that um, so you don't need to pick up very much just a tiny tiny little bit and then you're gonna place the brush down first where you want the most pigmentation so I'm gonna put it right on that outer corner and using a really light hand I am just blending that into my crease and pick up a little bit more product when I need it tapping off that excess every time And I'm just kind of slowly starting to shape out that outer V. I'm going quite a bit slower with this palette than I would normally because I know that there's sometimes some kind of issues with that formula. I'm just starting to shape out a little bit of like a halo eye here. Now that we have kind of our rough shape out, I'm going to take a blending brush and I'm going to just buff over those edges and then I can buff kind of more up towards my brow bone with this. Picking up more color as I need it. And I'm being really specific with my placement here. I'm making sure to kind of keep it as precise as I can. So you want to make sure that you're not going in with too big of a brush to lay down that color that you're leaving the bigger brushes for when you're going to go and blend out. Then I'm grabbing a slightly smaller brush. This is a Sigma E47 and I'm grabbing the color Axis from our subculture palette. And I'm just kind of going over that halo shape. So I'm just going over those edges. Then I'm just taking a clean brush and we're going to grab our prism palette and I'm gonna grab that color sphere. So this was also something that I saw people having problems with is the lighter colors in subculture kind of oxidizing or them kind of getting muddy with the darker shades. So I'm going to be applying um, the lighter shade kind of over top of where we put our uh, darker shade to kind of hopefully make it um, a little bit more basically pigmented so it's not going to get as muddy and lost whereas normally I would kind of put down the lightest shade first and kind of build up my color um, I just feel like that shade might get lost so I'm hoping that this will work a little bit better so starting not where there's no color and not where there's most color but almost going right over top of that gradient I'm going to apply that color sphere you can see there's a little bit of fallout down there that's fine You're gonna to wanna to be really cautious with this because as soon as we start blending those colors together, it might start getting kind of muddy on your brush. So you wanna make sure that you don't kind of pick up your brush from down here and bring it up higher to blend because you might bring that really intense pigmented color up here. So just kind of try to keep your brush right over top of that edge rather than 
blending upwards and upwards and upwards. If you need to blend out an edge more, you're gonna take a clean brush and buff right over top of those edges rather than where we are initially putting that color down. I hope this makes sense. I'm sorry, this is gonna be like a really boring video. I just wanna make sure that you guys are gonna have an easier kind of user experience with this palette if you've been struggling with it. Then we can take our original brush for blending and we can kind of go over top. Okay, I'm gonna grab a cream shadow from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Eyes to Mesmerize cream shadow in the color Cleopatra. It's kind of like a little teal color. I'm gonna pick that up on my Hakuhodo um, little shading brush. And I'm going to be putting this down just above my crease, right in the center of that halo eye. Then I'm gonna grab the color electric from our subculture palette. And I'm just grabbing that on a shader brush. And I'm going to kind of tap that on either side of the center of our lid. I don't know how to describe that better than I just did. We'll make that look better in a second, but this is the gist of it. Then I'm gonna grab the color Pyramid from our Axis, or wait, our Prism palette. I don't know if this is gonna be weird. We'll just have to see. I'm just grabbing a smaller shader brush for that color so that I can make it a little more precise. Have faith, guys. This is like a Bob Ross painting. It's probably gonna turn out in the end. Like, don't have as much faith in me as you would have in Bob Ross, but have like a close amount. Okay, I'm gonna take my little uh, Sigma E47 brush again, and I'm gonna take the color Axis, which was that blue shade we used, and I'm going to go across and kind of try to re evaluate my life, uh, redo this crease. I'm gonna take a little Sigma L04 brush and that color axis, and I'm just gonna kinda go over, I just feel like my crease is a little lumpy, and I'm gonna go over and make it like a really sharp line. This month's project throwback is gonna be a test of all of our makeup skills. Okay, so now that I have my little harsh line down, I'm taking my Sigma E47, wait, what? Yeah, E47. And I'm just blending over those edges. I do feel like subculture is like a little bit more time consuming and a little bit more effort, but I always feel like it's worth it because I end up really liking the looks I do with it. I feel actually pretty happy with where this is, but I think I'm gonna try and grab like maybe like a glitter liner or something like that and see if I can kind of go over top to make this look more crisp. Okay, I'm gonna take Stila Gold Goddess. I'm gonna grab that on my small little shader brush. Oh, that's a kuma shake. And I'm going to bring that right on my crease. Actually, maybe I can just grab it right from here. This is a dangerous, dangerous game we're playing. I'm gonna take that down the center of my lid just a little bit, but we're mostly focusing it on that crease to make it look more sharp. Oh fuck, I already fucked it up. There you go, cool. I don't know, I think that looks pretty good. I feel like I'm a trained makeup artist almost. Okay, so I have some fallout down here. Normally when I'm doing like a neutral eye, I kind of just wipe it away with a brush, but I'll show you guys when I wipe like that, because it's a blue pigment, it's going to be really, really noticeable. So it's just gonna be a lot quicker and easier to take my makeup wipe and just actually remove that pigment and just really quickly redo my under eye. You can totally do your foundation after your eyes. I just am a wacky bitch. Oh my God, who's that girl with a cut crease halo eye? Is that Robbie Eddie Christie? No, it's just me. Okay, I'm gonna take that same uh, Charlotte Tilbury cream shadow that we used. I'm gonna grab my Real Techniques accent brush and I'm going to go underneath my lower lash line with that. And actually on my lash line as well, I'm gonna go for it. Hopefully my contacts enjoy the proximity with that uh, cream eyeshadow. Then I'm gonna take uh, the color Throne from our Prism palette, oop, right there. And I'm going to press that over top of that cream shadow. Okay, and I'm gonna take that same color Sphere, that's that really bright yellow color, and I'm going to buff over my edges with that. 
Then I'm gonna grab that color Lucid from our Prism palette, and I'm going to bring that right onto my watery inner corner. Okay, you guys, I'm just gonna pop on some lashes and mascara, and I'll show you guys the finished look. Okay, so that is the final eye look. So for my face this month, uh, I wanted to try and use up uh, my Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow. This is in the medium dark one. Um, I actually got sent this by a friend of mine, Christine, and I've really, really been liking this one. I actually like this one better than the original one. So I'm gonna be using that for my bronzer and blush. I ended up redoing my foundation because I just was really not feeling that other one. I felt like it was making me look really dry and cakey. So I'm just applying that underneath my cheekbones and I'm just using really big swirling motions to keep this kind of nice and soft. I don't want to look super contoured. I just want to look kind of like warmed up. That eye look was a challenge for me, man, but I feel like I'm pretty like happy with how it turned out. I just look at some people on the internet, especially on Twitter for Christ's sakes. I look at some people and I'm like, I don't even understand how people do <laughs> makeup <laughs> like as well as they do sometimes. And I know obviously like Photoshop is a factor every now and again, but um, I just, I just look at some people and I'm like, holy fuck, they're so good at makeup. So in terms of like, just like navigating some of the problems that I had, I feel like the biggest thing with subculture is not getting overwhelmed. Um, because I felt like even when I put down that first color, I was like, oh, this is already so patchy. And it really just came into like, taking the time to like layer up those colors um, and not get like overwhelmed. Then for my highlight this month, I wanted to try and use up my old favorite MAC Hush. This is a cream color highlight. This is like the most beautiful highlight you will ever own. And honestly, it works so well on every single skin tone. It's just one of those products that like I put on and I'm like, why did I ever stop using this? I also feel like this formula is really versatile across lots of skin types as well. Like I don't feel like it's really greasy if you have oily skin and it's not too dry if you have dry skin. Sorry guys, I know this video is like really low energy. I feel like my last one was too, but it's just <laughs> the way it's been lately. For lips, uh, I've really been loving MAC Blankety lately. It's an oldie but a goodie. This guy's a little bit more kind of like on the cool toned, which I like with this kind of like more cool toned eye, but if you feel like it's like too cool for your skin, you can always pair it with like a warmer lip liner underneath to kind of like warm it up a bit. Let me take my earphone out for the outro so I feel more uh, professional. All right, you guys, so that is our first look for Project Throwback for October. I hope you guys enjoyed this look. We will be using Subculture and Prism all month long. If there's any kind of particular looks you guys wanna see or there's any colors that you guys have had issues with in either of these palettes, definitely let me know uh, and I'll try and incorporate it into a look. If you guys wanna see more like day looks and more wearable stuff, definitely let me know if you wanna see some more kind of dramatic, fun stuff like this, just so that we can kind of learn some new techniques, hopefully, uh, whatever you guys are kind of looking for just leave some comments and thoughts down below thank you guys so much for hanging out let me know what products you guys are going to be using for this month's project throwback i hope more of you follow along if you want to show me your looks or what you guys are picking out you can always hashtag project throwback on instagram or twitter thank you guys so much i will see you next time peace out